Hey guys, today's videos may not look like much starting out, but uh, it's an old uh, 1959, if I remember right, Model 6B Briggs and Stratton. And it came off an old tiller, and the tiller was junk, but I salvaged the motor off of it. When I got it, it wouldn't hardly turn over, and it would turn over so far and stop, and turn over so far and stop the other way. So I figured it was a stuck valve, and I was hoping that was all it was. So I pulled the head off, and after several weeks of soaking and penetrating oil, finally got the valves freed up and took them out. And I started, I originally wasn't going to make a video on it until I got it running. I'm just going to make a video of it running and talk about what I had to do to it. But I got so far into it now, I figured I'd just go ahead and pick up making a video of where I'm at now on it. So I'll talk a little bit about what I'm going to be doing. I got new rings for it. Uh, all new gaskets and new valves too. I didn't know what the valves will look like once I get them out. I don't even know if it needs rebuilt, but I figure being this old, it probably wouldn't hurt. The cylinder looks in good shape. But uh, before I take a, a piston out, I'm going to wire brush all this. Then I'll be surfacing it on my surfacing block. But uh, I want to talk about the valves in this first. This got the old type of retainer clip. You see it's got a rod that goes through here, and that's what holds your retainer clip on, like that, and your spring come off. And it's actually a really simple design, and I think it'd be probably more reliable, because there really is no way for that to come out. <laughs> Both valves are like that too, by the way. So it's going to be real easy to put back together. I'll compress the spring and the retainer clip together, then just slip that in there and let, the, let that out like that. So it's going to be real easy to put the valves back in. But uh, I don't know if the coil is good or not. If it's not, then I'll have to order a coil for it. It does have points and condenser. So hopefully that's all that, uh, it might need. And one thing I will uh, show. This is the uh, carburetor. It's an updraft carburetor. It's the smallest one I've ever seen. And uh, I don't know what kind of shape it's in. Inside, it probably needs clean. And... We'll just have to go from there and I want to get the engine rebuilt and put back together and then I'll take the carburetor apart and clean. I ain't going to show this on camera because all these updraft carburetors Briggs and Stratton use are the same with just different sizes. So we'll just uh, skip that on the video. I do have another video on uh, how to clean the updraft carburetor. So I'll refer you to that one if you need to, more information on this type of carburetor. I'm surprised this has an aluminum flywheel. I'd say this is one of the early aluminum block engines. It was another thing I meant to mention. It is a late 50s engine, but it's one of the early aluminum block Briggs and Stratton, so it's kind of a hard engine to find. off easier than I thought it would. It's an all aluminum flywheel. That bolt just broke. Okay, so now I'm gonna wire brush the top here, get the piston back up. We won't take a chance of scratching the cylinder. Then we get ready to pop the sump off here. Okay, so I got that cleaned up some for now. I will hit it with the servicing plate after I take it apart. I'm going to start taking the oil sump off or crankcase cover. It's being stubborn, so let me work with it a little bit. You always want to use a rubber mallet on these, because it's easy to crack it aluminum with a regular hammer. The gasket actually stayed intact. I could reuse it, but I got new ones, so I'll be using it. A little bit of dirt build up. Not as bad as I thought it would be. 
while this is penetrating oil where I was spraying on them valves and it soaked down through there. Anytime you take these tappets out, always mark them or put them in a place where you know that this one came out of this side and the other one came out of the, the intake. That way you're not getting them mixed up because they wear different. It'll throw your valve clearance off. It won't matter so much in this case since I'm putting new valves in it, but it's just something I like to uh, do. Okay, so now i got to bend these tabs so I can get the two bolts out of the rod. make note of how this dipper is it's more towards the back so it's bent the bent parts on the back part there the oil ring is stuck so if I ran this it probably would have scored the cylinder and or just smoked like a freight train I said I can't move that oil ring at all so that was one problem with it but yeah right now I'm going to pull the crankshaft out Crankshaft looks good. You gonna see a few wear marks here and there. That's normal. That's where your rod for your points rides on here. It acts like a camshaft. So right now I'm gonna clean everything up off camera. Then we'll get back to you on the assembly. Okay, so I took the wrist pin out, removing these clips to clean the pit inside the piston up. Put it back in there. Now we're going to get the rings off of it. That ring just broke too. I'm going to have to try to get this oil ring off. It's probably going to break too and I ain't too worried about it at this point. Alright, we're ready to put the new rings on. I got brand new vintage rings. That's what I found off eBay. And these are 10 thousandths oversized. That's the part number for it. 6BH, 6BHS. Yeah, I may not need an oversized ring, but I always like to do that and file the gaps. I got a video on how to do this and install the piston ring, so I'm just going to skip this step on the video here to speed things up. We'll get back to you with the rings installed. Okay, so I surfaced this and surfaced the head. Cleaned up best I could. It uh, should seal pretty good. So now I'm going to go ahead and work on the valves. Uh, this would be about the time I would be honing the cylinder, but this is aluminum bore, so I'm not going to hone it. The cylinder's in really good shape. A couple real tiny scratches, nothing to worry about. So I'm going to get ready to lap the valves in. I'm just going to show one valve, one camera, a little bit of lapping. I'm going to lap the valves, but they're not going to be installed yet because I'll have to set the uh, valve clearance after I get the camshaft and everything installed. So I'm just going to go ahead and lap them. That way I know they'll be sealing good and deal with the... Uh, Valve clearance here in a little bit. I've been doing this about five minutes, probably. I didn't want to show all of it on camera. Valve's looking pretty good. See it ring in the middle? That's what we're looking for. It's usually a little bit wider than that, but where these valve seats are so small, there's not much there. And the valve seat's cleaning up pretty good, too. There's not much angle there. It's really about as wide as that ring right there is as wide as the uh, face of the valve seat there, too. So it's not a real big uh, ceiling surface there. So I'm going to hit it just a little bit more and move on to the other one, and we'll show putting the Sit and putting the motor back together. I got oil on the oil seal here. Ready to put the crank back in. Well, guys, I thought I had the camera one there, but I didn't when I put the piston in there. The compressor was actually just a little too big for this small of a piston, so I had to use a screwdriver to gently push the ring in all the way around to get it to seat in on the top two rings 
then it went right in so now we're ready to put the uh, rod cap on and the uh, oil dipper a little trick on this tab that you bend over you can flip that around so you can get a cleaner edge to bend it back over you can do that one time and the next time you take it apart you gotta redo it get a new one I already matched the uh, cap up here so I know which way it goes on pay attention to how it came out I'm just going to run these bolts in for right now, then we'll torque them here in a minute. Okay, so the rod bolts for this Model 6B are torqued at 100 inch pounds. Not very tight at all. Okay, so now we're ready to set the valve clearance here. And for the intake valve, it's five to seven thousandths, and the exhaust valve is nine to eleven. Pretty typical for a Briggs engine. And I don't have any clearance at all. That's at five thousandths, and I checked it with a two thousandths, and it did the same thing. So I'm going to have to file the bottom of the valve stem here. And uh, we're just going to show one valve on camera because uh, it's the same for both valves, just a different clearance spec. And so. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this in the vise with a rag around it to keep from scratching the surface up. And I'm just going to file this as flat as possible. You can use a, a grinder with a real fine stone and just barely touch it like that. Or a vertical sander, just anything you can have a good control on. You don't want to use a heavy bench grinder or an angle grinder or nothing like that. Alright, so I finally ended up using the grinder a little bit. When I press down, I get just a little tiny bit of drag, so it's probably about five and a half thousandths, I would say. Which is just about perfect. And when you put the valve in, you want to hold forward for right now, like this, so you'll be able to insert the pin. So I'm going to have to get the valve spring and retainer clip compressed in this. It should give me enough room to get the, the pin in. And I may or may not be able to show you everything on here. Well, there's not much room at all. If you look, I got barely just enough room to take a pair of needle nose and get that pin in there. So we're just going to look at it after it's together because I'm just my head just going to be in the way blocking. There's no way to show it on here. So, all right, guys, got the valves in there. I say I actually really prefer this type of valve system. It's actually a lot easier to work on. You know, it's old when these screws are flathead drives. I'm pretty sure I'm putting this on right. It could be wrong. I can't remember to be honest with you. It's been apart for a while. Like I said, I was hoping it'd be just a stuck valve and be done with it, but I figured go ahead and rebuild. Always like how a brand new head gasket looks. And the head gasket and that base gasket was easy to find in brand new parts, but for some reason I couldn't find brand new uh, rings and valves for it. This is something I mentioned in one of my older videos. In a lot of these flathead engines, you'll have three long bolts, and they always go around where the exhaust valve is. And you can see the other ones, are, they're all just sitting there starters. There's probably one or two threads caught on all of them right now.
All right, guys, we're going to stop the video right here. Cause I'm just going to make this part one of uh, rebuilding this motor, putting new rings in it and everything you've seen. But now I'm having spark problems. With the original coil, I cannot get spark. So I'm going to make a separate part two is going to be uh, talking about the ignition, getting the spark, and part three will be a running note. So we'll split up into three parts here. I think that'd be easier because some other people might run into this problem that I got here and be easier to explain just two videos make it a lot shorter so uh yep thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for part two and we'll get we'll get her sparking in part two then we'll get her running in part three so thanks for watching guys catch you on the next one